that he's talking to himself again. You seem to like this, so I reckon you'll like these. Here I've got a whole load of mini pine cones and they've been drying in my toaster oven for quite a few hours and I need to put them in resin but I need to find some way of put you know making a mold for these that I'm not going to waste too much resin so these tubes that you get things like Forstner bits in and drill bits and things um, we're gonna see if we can wedge them in these and uh, use these as molds um, free and uh, don't waste so much resin if you've got an exact fit. So here are the pine cones all uh, positioned in their various tubes and silicon moulds and here I'm mixing up the Opticast 2000 resin I'll get this from MBFG in Belfast it's a clear resin and you have to measure it out very accurately I'm adding a little bit of uh, amber pigment here and then I'm pouring the moulds making sure they're topped right up to the top once they're uh, poured it's into the pressure pot 60 psi until the uh, resin has cured keeping the compressor connected the whole time and then uh, afterwards it's a case of uh, depressurizing it equalizing the pressure and removing the uh, molds just cutting off the masking tape and there we go come out very nicely and I cut off the uh, plastic tubes as well so they're all ready for turning then we're going to start work on the prototype egg so I've mounted this in my easy chuck and I'm using an easy wood tools negative rake cutter and of course the obligatory slow-mo bit for everybody Love the uh, wormy shavings coming off there and uh, what I'm doing is turning this down to a, a set diameter. These uh, negative rate cut cutters stop the uh, chipping out of the resin which can occur with ordinary cutters. Just measuring out the pine cone and here I'm hollowing out using a drill bit. And this uh, drill bit is sized to, to fit the wormwood screw. And then partially parting off and then back to the negative rake uh, cutters and I'm shaping the egg I'm not shaping it completely, I've parted it off and just changing the chuck jaws on the uh, easy chuck which is a simple quick job and then in goes the uh, woodworm screw I'm using the tail stock to line this up and I'm screwing that screw into the base of the egg using it as a mandrel and here I'm finishing off the egg shape using a negative rake tip on this uh, easy wood tool just getting it to a nice egg shape a few finishing cuts I've switched to a slightly smaller cutter there now it's a case of sanding I think I sanded it to 400 and then Yorkshire Grit Original putting that on liberally and then uh, working the grit and it gets finer and finer then I used some little bits of safety cloth to buff it away and uh, looking good I then repeated the process with the Yorkshire Grit Microfine but uh, for the um, the rest of the eggs, I actually just used microfine. I didn't use the original. I went straight to microfine. Now I know this works, I've got to do my little production run because uh, I've decided it's got to be a dozen eggs. We always sell eggs by the dozen and uh, I'm sure dragons must lay a dozen eggs. So here I am just uh, marking out these blanks. I'm using a slightly different uh, method here just because I'm uh, turning several at once. You can see I've prepared all these blanks. And I start by hollowing out and then uh, parting off. 
and I just keep repeating this down the length of each blank and uh, then it's using the uh, wormwood screw as or woodworm screw as a mandrel again bringing up the tail stock and uh, using that to apply pressure while I screw this in you'll notice I'm using zero jaws on my sorby chuck here because uh, I'm working very close to the jaws and it just saves my knuckles a bit the nice rounded jaws which uh, leave the workpiece nice and proud I got quite quick at doing these eggs I hate repetitive work I could never um, turn a chest set and then it was using the uh, woodworm screw again as a mandrel to hold each egg while I buffed it on my buffing wheel using some Vonax it would be very dangerous to uh, buff a small object like this without some method of holding it securely a few words on uh, the safety of using buffing wheels in your workshop uh, they look innocent enough but they can be quite dangerous um, and people actually get severely injured or even killed using buffing wheels and the reason for this is you often have them going at quite high speed typically when I'm buffing I'm going about 1500 rpm and they can if you lose concentration grab what you're buffing and it will fling it off at very high velocity and it could come straight back at you so you know particularly dangerous if it's something sharp like a knife blade that you're buffing or something like that or something heavy and so always keep a very firm grip of what you're buffing and make sure you're not keeping any hooked edges or anything coming into contact with the buffing wheel that could grab so uh, just be very careful I always wear my um, visor with the respirator on because it does throw off a lot of dust too as well as this providing the safety of uh, things flying back at you. I've uh, marked out the pattern I want the eggs to sit in and spray mounted that onto a piece of plywood. I've cut the plywood out and sanded the edges and this is some brass tube which I've cut into little pieces and filed. I've then drilled out those holes using the depth stop to the same diameter as the brass tubing and these then sit in there very nicely now they are all sat to depth and I'm just sizing up some off cuts of sapele I had left over from a project from years ago cut out a couple of discs which I'm putting together I'm just using some uh, fast set epoxy resin here because I, I want to get on and finish this project it's uh, been going on for a few weeks and uh, I didn't want to have to wait for PVA I'm just seating the two together I'm using the drill bit through the two central holes to line it up clamping it up take the drill bit out just in case it gets glued into place and that hole is just the right size for the woodworm screw on the easy chuck so I'm mounting this uh, two piece of peely blank uh, onto the chuck now making sure that's properly secure using the Sorby bowl gouge just truing up the uh, blank getting it running nicely this uh, blank will make sense uh, in a little while you'll see what I'm doing but just truing up the front face and the sides making sure it's running round and making sure it's the correct diameter as well just getting a nice sharp angle in there then I'm contouring this rim this is going to form the bottom of it marking out the top and starting the hollowing using a, a bowl gouge just to remove the bulk of the sapele for the hollowing running across the face defining the uh, the recess making sure it's correct for my uh, egg tray so to speak I'm creating a little shoulder for that 
the mounting plate to sit on. Just finishing as much hollowing as I can. Bit of dusting, test fitting where the eggs are going to sit. And then uh, using an easy wood tools, easy rougher here, just squaring up and neatening up the bottom of the recess. This is where the electric's going to sit. And I'm now drilling a hole in the side of the blank where the uh, socket is going to sit, the 12 volt socket. A little bit of hand sanding, just checking the base of it to make sure it's uh, not going to spin or rock. Putting my logo brand on there. Couple of coats of uh, cellulose sanding sealer, and then uh, Yorkshire grit. Just uh, buffing that Yorkshire grit. Then some chestnut products, micro crystalline wax. Just on the base part, you can see a nice bit of chatoyancy there. Then I'm using a little bit of CA glue, just to fix these brass tubes into place in the plywood. Then it's indoors, and I've got all these little pieces of uh, slate, which I'm using epoxy resin to seat around that rim. This is forming the uh, sort of a cairn-like nest, I suppose. So I'm just building it up layer by layer, gradually adding more and more. Once I go above the rim of the sapele, I've used a former to help me form the nest. I'm just pulling that former out and there's the nest all made out of uh, real slate and this that is a uh, coarse turf um, from woodland scenics model makers or you know model railway makers use it for putting grass and building trees and things i'm using a slow set of epoxy and putting blobs of it over a lot of the slate and then I sprinkle this uh, coarse turf stuff on the top and then I'm using some milliput this is my favorite epoxy putty using the terracotta and uh, it's a two-part epoxy putty you put the two equal lengths together and they mix thoroughly for five minutes so there's no streaks or anything Anyone who's watched a lot of my videos will know I use Milliput in a lot of my projects. It's brilliant stuff, very versatile. But you need to mix it and mix it and mix it and mix it until there's no streaks. And it takes a good five minutes, really. But you've got plenty of working time. Roll it and fold it. Keep folding the, folding the edges and the ends into the middle. And here we are. I'm just moulding this into place now. What I'm doing is creating a contoured base for the eggs to sit in. There we go, you can see the little dents for the eggs to sit in and I'm using slow set epoxy resin again. And some more of this Woodland Scenics uh, artificial turf stuff. Sprinkling that on liberally and just patting it down. And then the next day I'm brushing away all the excess off the uh, stonework and off the base it's a good result very pleased with how that looks you can see uh, how it's all going to work yep just confirming the eggs do sit there and uh, we're going to sort out the power supply now you can either use a 12 volt um, adapter or you could run it off a 9 volt battery with one of those little connectors and these are LED lights, pre-wired 12 volt, and they flicker. They're flickering LEDs, so I'm just testing them before I wire them up, make sure they work. Threading them all through the base plate. And stripping off the ends. Twisting them all together. And a very amateurish bit of uh, soldering here, or soldering, depending on which side of the pond you're from. I'm finishing off with a bit of shrink tube to insulate my connections. There we go, all lit up and twinkling away nicely. And here I am just seating the eggs on top of the uh, LED bulbs. That's great, looks exactly as I wanted. You like this? So I thought you might like these. 
just mini versions really but with uh, a flickering LED light inside each one to give it a sort of a life of its own. Don't worry if you can't get a really good look at this. I'll put some better uh, close-up shots and some video at the end. Um, but really pleased with how that's came out. It's all low voltage. It's a 12 volt transformer. And uh, you could run this off batteries in actual fact. You, it would run off a 9 volt uh, battery. But it wouldn't be so bright. But there we go. It's a um, little miniature pine cones set in resin, hollowed out. Uh, turned into eggs and polished and uh, each one got a flickering 12 volt pre-wired LED. There are loads and loads of pre-wired LEDs available for 12 volt systems on eBay and the like and they're very very cheap and because they're pre-wired they're easy to uh, work with and these 12 volt transformers are cheap as chips as well. And there we are, real slate, model makers uh, grass on there to make the uh, mossy look but yeah i think any dragon would be pleased with that thanks ever so much for watching i hope you enjoyed that and please like share and subscribe give me a thumbs up it all helps and uh, i'll be back soon with some more videos as promised there's a few close-up shots uh, video and stills yeah, really pleased with these LEDs and the sort of effect they give. I tried showing this in different exposures and things so you can get an idea of what the lights look like. And there's a few uh, shots outdoors so you can get a better look at the uh, the nest. But I was very pleased with how the uh, the eggs came out. I mean, many, many thanks for uh, watching. Massive thank you to all my subscribers. Uh, really thrilled with how my channel has grown recently i really appreciate that so that'd be fantastic if you could like share and subscribe it costs nothing to subscribe and you'll be notified uh, when i put out more videos but give me a thumbs up it all helps and i'll be back soon with some more stuff please like share and subscribe my daddy needs all the help he can get more rubbish coming soon.